Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to do another review. There's another paid request, this time for Nate. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reviews, reactions, commentaries, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for Ninja 3 The Domination, which... <laughs> This is a pretty crazy film. Now, Canon Films made quite a few ninja films back in the day. Entered the ninja, did a bit of business. So then they got this guy, Sam Furstenberg, to do Revenge of the Ninja, which I think is an awesome film. I need to get it on Blu ray. I keep forgetting. Show Kasugi stars. He was in Enter the Ninja, but he gets to star in Revenge of the Ninja. Different character, more of the hero this time. And before I do this, a, a quick story of Revenge of the Ninja. I remember back in the day, I had the haziest of memories about some opening with a massacre and a little kid get shot with an arrow. I remember like it was such a scene that was an imprint in my mind. But it was like a foggy, hazy memory. And for the longest time, it'd be like back there going, what was that movie? And then it was, I don't know, five, seven years ago, I saw Revenge of the Ninja all the way through. I went, that's it! That's the fucking movie! Great score, wonderful ninja action. Of the three, Ninja, Enter the Ninja, Revenge of the Ninja 3, that is my favorite. And for understanding Revenge of the Ninja... Is one of the first ones that got released with the help of MGM, which Canon Films liked, because they liked that they could be incorporated with a major studio. <clears throat> and Revenge of the Ninja was a highly successful for them. Thus, very quickly a year later, you had Ninja Three. This wasn't as successful, but then a year after this, you had American Ninja, and that blew the doors off. That was more successful than all the other Ninja movies combined. And then American Ninja 2, which is my favorite of all that. American Ninja 2 Confrontation, then Revenge of the Ninja, then American Ninja 1. Of all those Ninja movies, back in the day. Of all time, it'd be Ninja Turtles 1 and 2. But, I mean, back to the... And also, at the time, they had this weird deal with Lucinda Dickey. I guess Canon Films, Golden and Globus, which I love Canon Films. For those who don't know, I'm not one of these guys that hates Canon Films or they're so bad, they're so good. No, I sincerely love Canon Films. Firewalker, Invasion USA, American Ninja 1 and 2, Revenge of the Ninja. I think they're sincerely entertaining, fun, kick ass movies that put action front and center and as it should be. And drew stars, like Chuck Doors drew as a star, worked with Canon Films, Sho Tasudi, Michael Dudikoff, Steve James, may he rest in peace, among others. I guess they tried to do the Lucinda Ditti and it didn't work out because they had Breakin and Breakin 2 Electro Boogaloo. Then they had this film. I think there's supposed to be like two other films, but I think they got tired of each other. And Lucinda Ditti did not do much after this. I think she retired from acting in 1990. And I th heard she married a guy who helped produce the reality show Survivor. <laughs> but I think she retired in 1990. I could be wrong. And Breaking and Breaking 2 are there. Well, I mean, they were there. I remember not minding them. But Lucinda Ditti, yeah, she wasn't going to be a, a big star in this. And Sho Kasugi apparently was mad, going, wait a minute. I start a Revenge of the Ninja, and I won't be the star of your next movie? And I'm going to have a female ninja you know, kick my ass? What's going on? People view it sexist nowadays, but... I think for Shota Studio, it was a sense of pride of... I thought I did a good job for you guys, I was a star of it. Now you say, I, I don't want to be a star, did I do something wrong? I think it was more of a pride issue. And so they made this weird plot where... Up to this insane opening, which I'll get to. Which I would say, the movie kind of blows its load because of that. I think that's one of the faults of the film. I, I, I did enjoy the film. I do think Revenge of the Ninja is a much better movie, though. 
Same with American Ninja 1 and 2. I do think those are much better movies than this, but I did enjoy this for what it was. But the I think the insane opening, the movie blew its load too early. And the, the rest of the movie has crazy stuff, but never up to the level of that opening. Like, the opening is the best action scene in the movie. And the that's why the... I'll get to that. But... A ninja dies, an evil ninja, and finds his telephone repair person, played by Lucinda Ditti, and possesses her body. And so he'll possess her, her body from time to time to kill the policeman that murdered him. Or not murder, but killed him. It wasn't murder, it was just a thought, homicide. It's... Lucinda Ditti also is very much into aerobics. That's why the movie comes off as flash dance meets the actresses meets a ninja movie. And I think that's where the cult comes from, this appeal. And I don't have the Blu-ray. I saw this online. Um, I think there's some features on it. I could be wrong. but So I don't know much of the backstory about the making of the film. But it's definitely this weird combination of stuff where the movie does at least keep a somewhat interest because every five, ten minutes something weird happens that bottles your mind. I mean, from the beginning, why is this ninja who's in this nice looking suit goes into this cave? Why did he put his ninja stuff in this cave? Not in his apartment or warehouse. For some reason, he put it in this cave. And why is his first destination a golf course? Uh, does he hate golf as much as me? Is that why? He's like, fuck golf. I fucking hate golf. I'm going to kill everybody in this fucking golf course. I'm tired of golf. Golf is exciting as flies fucking. I'm going to kill every motherfucking golfer known to mankind. He really hates golf. So I'm like, why is this shit in a cave? Why is the first destination a fucking golf course? I don't know. <laughs> You're not supposed to ask because who the fuck cares? Cause it's an insane scene where he's like killing everybody in the golf course. He's killing bodyguards. He's killing police officers, he gets on the tree, he gets to a chopper, he kills the people on the chopper, he falls to the wall into the water. Cops shoot him more times than Michael Myers gets shot, and then he's still killing some. Why is he able to take eighty five bullets when he should be as measured as lasagna by now? And he still gets shot, he's still killing cops and throwing ninja stars and these little thumb uh, I don't know, not thumbtacks, but these little spike things. He still gets shot again another 85 times. He disappears in the dirt. Comes out of it. And he looks good for a guy that got shot in more times than Michael Myers or 50 Cent has. <laughs> and then finds Lucinda Dickey. Now, like I said, that opening is so insane, so crazy, filled with action. You start the movie on this plateau, and then the rest of the movie is like this. It never gets up to that opening. That's why it's, a gr it's the best scene in the movie, but it's the first ten minutes of the movie. That's what I mean. It kind of blew its load too early. And the finale is nowhere near as exciting as the opening. Like, the finale is kind of a let... It's a letdown compared to the opening. But the finale... It's just... They're on some rocks, and there's a bit of a sword fight, and then... Climbing up, and then stabbing the guy in the head, and then it's done. It's like, hmm, that's it. I mean, Revenge of the Ninja was much more satisfying finale because it's in the city and it's on the rooftops and there's fire and all this crazy shit. Lucinda Ditti was... She's in there because they had this deal with her to make her a big star. Obviously, they didn't happen. She was a wrong choice. I don't think she was that good. 
she definitely does not know jack shit about martial arts. Why didn't you get someone like Cynthia Rothrock? Like, if you had Cynthia Rothrock in this role, it would have been so much better, in my opinion, because she knows how to do martial arts. You just say she has the same acting ability as Lucinda Dickey, which is better acting, that's up to you. But she definitely knows martial arts. If you want a female to do more, just get Cynthia Rothrock. If Cynthia Rothrock started Ninja 3, the domination, I think it would have been much better. Just, you wouldn't have to fuck around with the action fight scenes. That's why a lot of it is her in the mask. Just you get someone who knows a bit better, and but just her doing, mm, huh, 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 yeah. Should have hired Cynthia Rothrock. And weird stuff like from time to time the spear will possess her. At one point it possesses her through a fucking arcade machine. Like she has an arcade in her which must have been fucking expensive in 1984 to have a fucking arcade machine in your home. I mean, how much money do you make as a telephone repairman to afford an arcade machine in this big-ass apartment? And I think it's a game that never came out, also. And this light show is on her face and possesses her. And I do remember reading one of the inspirations was Poltergeist, because Poltergeist was a big hit. Because that came out in 82, and this is 84... Might have been getting made in 83 for 84. So Poltergeist was in the mind. But I will say it's it's not boring. It's not boring. I, yeah, I think it's... Actually, was it blue, it's low at the beginning. But it's, I did every 5-10 minutes something weird happens. Like there's a seduction scene where she is with this cop... And she pours V8 on herself. The tomato V8. I'm like, why the hell is she pouring V8? V fucking 8 on herself. But I also re remember reading. Apparently one of the sponsors they had for the film was V8. And they had a shitload of V8. And they had a product placement. And they didn't know how to put it in there. And like, well, you know when some people have sex. They have used wine. Well, we got all this fucking V8, and she's in a robot's health nut. Make it V8. But it just comes off as a fucking parody. Uh, Seduction by V8 juice. But she gets possessed, and will kill a cop, and then kill another cop. One of the cops was a guy who was an American Ninja, but I remember him as one of the neighbors, Mr. Atmanic, in uh, Elf, the sitcom Elf. Was it John... Jake John Lamada? I forgot his name, but I remember he's one of the neighbors on the sitcom Elf. Mr. Atmonic. Next door neighbors of the Tanner family and Elf. Willie Tanner. I'm a big fan of the Elf TV show. Which I heard Shell Factory got the rights to them. They released them on their Shell Factory TV. I don't know if they're ever going to release a physical product of Elf. I've heard no news on it. I wish they would release the uncut episodes. I mean, great, I have them because I have the German DVDs of Elf that... Other than about four episodes, the rest are uncut, meaning non-syndicated. Anyway, going off tangent. Shotosudi... I think that's one of the other drawbacks of the film. He's not utilized much, which is a shame. I mean, he comes in not halfway, it, earlier than that, but he appears, he's got an eye patch, He kind of on the sidelines. It's at least halfway through, a little over, the, you get the first little bit of action from him. Where he beats up a couple people in order to find the dead body and know that his spirit is transferred. And that's what I mean. It's like either you wish someone like Cynthia Rothrock was in the Lucinda Ditty role, or like, man, there's a lot more Lucinda Ditty than Shota Sudi, and I don't think that's the good, the right thing. 
you even have this weird exorcism type of scene with James Hahn, Lo Pan from Big Trouble Little China. And it, it gets ridiculous. It's it's a laughable scene where they tie her up. And because they tie her up, she starts flipping herself like this. As if you're doing a, a rotisserie roast. I don't know how to put it. Well, if you have this piece of paper, right? Imagine she's tied up. And then she's just rolling herself like this. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Uh, and then she do like the yell from Xena. Remember Xena War Princess? Yeah, 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 Only a ninja can destroy a ninja. And then finally at the end of the third act, there's a bit where he fights the female possessed ninja in this building. But it's not much of a fight, mainly a sort of cab mouse chase. And they love going through the ceiling or going through the floor. Uh... And then uh, later on, this is a little sword fight, and then the soul just put back into. I guess the spirit's like, fuck this, I'm gone. Gave up, and then transferred her soul to the, the dead ninja body. I don't know why I didn't transfer her soul into so, uh, Shokazuti. Because it did it to Lucida Ditti. Why did it try to go into the soul of Suti? I don't know why. Instead of going into a dead. your dead body. But whatever. Whoever flips your lid. And there's months in this one scene later. I know I'm I'm trying to be vague as well for those who didn't see it. As well going through it. And even the bit where like for how the f I don't know how it controls the months. I didn't know it had that power. Because it doesn't possess. I thought it'd be like shocker. Or you know something later on you know a movie later on but it would go from body to body and possess this monk and possess this but no it somehow can just controls them and I did I don't know how the fuck it had that power but it just did you think it would have used that power before in the movie but whatever but it's so sure to to get some fight season but that fight scene I didn't care for him against the monks but there, I swear there were times where he would punch someone. He punch someone. It'd be this far, and you would hear a sound effect. Puh! I'm like, wait a minute, that punch didn't connect. <laughs> I swear, some of those punches didn't connect. Uh, you did a decent fight with him and the bad guy at the end, where they're on these rocks. But I, I think just the location is pretty bland. Compared to, again, the beginning, the golf course, and all the cops, and you're on a chopper, the chopper crashes, or the end of the Revenge of the Ninja, you're on a city, you know, the rooftop in the city, and the background of the city, and there's fire, and there's, like, fate bodies, fate ninja bodies, like, how the fuck did he do that? It's just much more exciting in Revenge of the Ninja at the beginning of this movie. So the ending feels a bit of a... Eh... That reaction. Yeah. I also found it funny that they used a lot of music from Revenge of the Ninja. Granted, it's not a bad thing because I love the score. Revenge of the Ninja is a fantastic score. But they use a lot of cues from that in this movie. It's fun for what it is. It's not boring. Like I said, every five, ten minutes, something weird and screwy happens. Uh, nice to have Shota Sudi in there. Too much of Lucinda Ditti. I, I think that was the wrong choice. I still would like to see more Shota Sudi. Or I did have someone like Cynthia Roth, who I just Lucinda Ditti. 
Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense, and you just have to go with it if you want to enjoy it. Like I said, the the best scene is the beginning, and it kind of blew its load in the action after that, because the action never comes close to being as crazy and fun as the beginning. Like, if you watch the... like, yeah. Those first ten minutes are fun. Like, the ending is not nearly as good as the beginning. But I would still rather watch this than Enter the Ninja, because Enter the Ninja I was not a fan of. I thought that was a fairly boring film. But Revenge of the Ninja, I think, is easily the best of the three. Ninja 3 is entertaining for what it is. But American Ninja 1 and 2 are definitely better than the than the than this. But uh still entertaining, still fun. So with that said, thanks for watching, take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye bye.